Hello guys, welcome to our class for today. Um, this is Normal Math Science Tutors Online and I remain notable Michael. You are welcome to our physics class for today. For this particular class, we'll be looking at uh, lenses. You know, we've discussed curved mirrors, we've discussed plane mirrors, under light waves, we've discussed plane mirrors, we've discussed uh, curved mirrors. Now I want to talk about lenses and in this particular class we'll look at the different types of lenses, we'll look at their uses, read diagrams for formation of images at the different position of objects in the different types of lenses. So that is what we're going to cover in this particular class. So please if you have your writing materials ready, we're we'll going straight to our class, but before then please if you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to this channel. Click on the notification bell so that whenever we upload a new video, YouTube will notify you. You can reach us via the WhatsApp number that is showing right on your screen. Is that okay? We also want you to please give us a thumbs up, give us a like, recommend this channel, share it with your friends and your colleagues so that they can also come and benefit from what you are enjoying here. So if you are ready with your writing materials, please let's go straight to our class for today. So we are looking at uh, refraction in lenses and uh, a lens is a piece of glass which is curved on both sides or is a transparent piece of glass with two faces of which at least one face of it is curved, right? And what a lens does is that it causes a beam of light passing through it to either converge or diverge and because the beam of, because the ray that passes through it we either diverge or converge. That is what gives us the different types of lenses that we have. So we have two types of lenses. We have the converging lens and then the diverging lens. So the converging lens is also called the con convex lens, while the diverging lens is also called the concave lens. So most lenses are actually made of glass materials. You know, if you check your laboratory, you see that the lens that you have, they are made of glass material, while some are made of plastic or quartz depending on the type you want to use but lenses generally are made of glasses okay so we have the two types of lenses we are looking at the convex lens this is the typical read diagram for a convex lens okay so a convex lens is also called a converging lens so for a convex lens the center of the lens is thicker than the edges and what it does is that parallel rays to the principal axis, they converge to a point after refraction from the lens. So any ray that enters this lens, as it is coming out of the lens, they will all converge at a point F. Okay, so this is a converging lens and this is a typical ray drawing for a converging lens. Still on refraction in lenses, we have the diverging lens, which is the second type of lens. For the diverging lens, the center is thinner than the edges. Okay, so this is a typical diverging lens, and what it does is that the ray of light that passes through it appears to diverge after refraction from the lens. So if you look at these rays that are coming here, they will all diverge from the from the center of the lens. Okay, they will all diverge, and then there is an um, visual, in visual rays that comes back to converge at a point behind. So any ray that passes this through this lens appears to diverge. Okay, so this is a typical diverging or concave lens, while the one we looked at before now is a convex or converging lens. So these are the two types of lenses that we actually have. And these are the ones that you use in your laboratory. Okay, so we are talking about the types of lenses and we have the two types and under these two types of lenses, there are other ones 
depending on the use that you want to put the lens to there are other types of lens that are under this two type of lens so for a this is these are the types of convex lens then these are the types of concave lenses so depending on the use you have different so we have the first one is the biconvex and biconcave lenses so if you look at it it has the center that is divided and there is like as if there are two lenses that are brought together so this is the biconcave and then this is the biconvex lens and they are used mostly in your laboratory okay then you now have the one that looks like half of the biconvex and the biconcave lens these are called planoconcave and planoconvex lens and they are used mostly for optical instruments so most optical instruments like um, cameras they use these lenses okay plano concave and plano convex lens then you have the concavo convex and the convexo concave this type of lenses they are used as contact lens to correct eye defects why because they fit to the eyeball the feet to the coverture of the eyeball so these are the type of lenses that are used for um, contact lenses okay for the correction of uh, eye defects all right so we have the concavo convex and then the convexo concave lens so these are the other types of lenses that we have all right So just like we discussed when we talk when we treated the curve mirrors, we also have some terms that are associated with the lenses, and one of them is the aperture. The aperture is the width of the lens, that is the distance between one end to the other end. That is the aperture of the lens. Then the center of the lens is called the optical center. And this is where any ray that passes through to diverge or converge as the case may be okay so this optical center is the center of the glass of the lens where it passes without being deviated by the lens then the principal axis is a line that passes through the optical center of the lens and joining the center of subcoverture of each surfaces now a lens has two centers of coverture one is on the right and one is on the left so this is the principal axis then the principal focus is the point on the on either side of the lens on the principal axis to which parallel rays of light close to the principal as it converge or appear to diverge after refraction from the lens so as i said before a lens has two uh, a lens has two focal length and it has two principal it has two principal focus okay a lens has two principal focus so the focal length this is the distance between the optical center and the principal focus and that is this distance here the distance between the center of the lens and the principal focus is the focal length so a lens has two principal focus okay so this is the drawing of a lens and then i mean these are the basic terms that are associated with a lens and it's good you take note of all this so the line that runs through the center of the lens is the principal axis then the point where it uh, seems to converge is the principal focus or seems to divide its principal focus then you have the center optical center of the lens so what are some of the uses of lenses Okay, so lens helps to correct eyesight vision problem. Okay, so lenses are used to correct uh, defects in vision. The lens are also used in photographic camera. They are used in, as magnifying glasses in the laboratory. Lenses are used as magnifying glasses in the laboratory. Then they are also used in projectors to focus objects. Okay, so these are some of the basic use of lenses. You can still look for more from your textbooks. Is that okay? So these are the basic uses of lenses. So for a lens to form an image of an object placed on, on its part, there are some rules that uh, we need to follow. 
So we know light trace incident on a conversion lens converge to form a re-image after passing through a conversion lens. While for a diverging lens, the ray from an object will diverge to form a visual image of the object. So for you to for the lens to form an image, these are the rules that you have to follow. One is that the ray that are parallel to the principal axis that passes to the principal focus after refraction. So any ray that passes through the that is parallel to the principal as will pass through the principal focus. That is one. Then there is a ray that will pass through the principal focus that is parallel to the principal as after refraction. Then ray through the optical center which is not refracted. All this we are going to see as we look at the ray diagrams that form different images of different objects at different position. The broken lines are used to indicate visual ray lines and images, while unbroken lines are used to indicate real rays and real images. Okay, and then real images are formed by actual intersection of rays after refraction, while visual images are formed by apparent intersection of rays produced backwards. All this we discussed when we treated curved mirrors. All right, so let's look at some of the ray diagrams and then look at the position of the objects and the type of image that are formed. So ray diagrams are formation of images in a converging or convex lens. So in a converging or convex lens, when the object is between the first cases, when the object is between the principal focus and the pool, and the optical center of the lens. Look at the ray diagram. Any ray that is parallel to the principal axis will pass through the principal focus. I told you before that lenses have two principal focus. So one is at the right, one is at the left. It has two points of center of curvature. One is here and one is here. So a ray that passes that is parallel to the principal axis will pass through the principal focus. Then this is the ray that passes through the optical center that is not deviated. Okay, so by the time you trace this to ray, but you have this, and then this image that is formed, one, the image is upright, it is visual, it is larger than the object, and it is a, uh, it is erect, and it is behind the object. So these are the characteristics of the image formed when the object is between the principal focus and the optical center of the lens. Then case two. When the object is at the principal focus, what I want you to take note of here is that <coughs> you should know how to draw this ray diagram to locate objects. I mean, to locate the image of an object at different points on, on the lens. So, if you are able to follow the one we treated when we talked about uh, curved mirrors, this one will be a little bit also easy for you to follow through. So, when the object is at F, the image is at infinity. So once you know that the image will be at infinity, at infinity, then you should know how to construct your ray diagrams. Okay, so in your examination, except you are asked to draw to scale, you should be able to represent a drawing that will show that yes, you understand what your question is asking you to do. So when the object is at F, the image is at infinity, and this is the ray diagram for it. Okay, this is the ray diagram for it this case two so case three this is case three and case four for case three when the object is between the principal focus and the center of coverage of the lens so when the object is between the principal focus and the center coverture this is the ray diagram the image will be beyond 2f and the image is three because it's an actual intersection of rays. It is inverted and it is also magnified. It is bigger than the object. And that's what you can see here. So this case of images form at different position of object is very, very important. And you can only understand it if you practice it very well, you understand it. Then for case four, when the object is at 2F, the image is always at 2F. And they are the same size, their image is inverted, and same size as the object, the image is three. 
if you refer back to when we treated curve mirror, and this is also the characteristic of the image form when the object is at the center of curvature, the image will be at the center of curvature. It's just that for a lens, a lens has two centers of curvature and it also has two focal points. Okay. This is case five and six when the object is beyond 2f. When the object is behind 2f, the image is between f and 2f. The image is real, it is inverted, and it is diminished. So if you see that when the object was at 2f, the image was behind 2f. So you can see how this thing is related. So you can actually try to practice and get used to this, um, these drawings of them. Um, Read diagrams. Then, when the object is at infinity, the image is at. F. Remember that when the image was at f, the when the when the object was at f, the image was at infinity. Now the object is at infinity, the image is at f. Are you seeing the way they are related? So if you can understand it, it will make life easy for you. Now the image is at f. It is real inverted and it is diminished. Because if you look at where the object is coming from, the object size will be very big. But look at the focusing of the image here. Okay, so these are some of the ray diagrams to represent uh, um, the images formed by converging or convergence lens. What of a diverging or concave lens? So for a diverging or concave lens, for all position of the objects, the image is always between F and the, and the optical center. It is erect, it is diminished, and it is visual. So for all position of the object in a concave lens or diverging lens, the image form is between F and the optical center. It is visual, it is erect, and it is diminished. So this is the read diagram for, because you can be asked that, draw the read diagram to show the image form by a diverging lens. Finish. That is a typical examination question. Draw the ray diagram to show the image form by a diverging lens. This is the image that the image must have these characteristics. This is an examination question and it is just is just like that. So please you need to take note of this and know how to draw ray diagrams for uh, different positions of image uh, objects and then know the image that are form. Okay, so I think. Um, this is where we are wrapping up this introduction to lenses. I hope this topic is simple and then you follow through. Okay, so thank you so much, guys. Um, before I go, please subscribe to our channel, click on the notification bell. Whenever we upload a new video, YouTube will notify you. This is normal science to source online, and I remain on top of my care. Please reach us through the WhatsApp number that is showing on your screen. If you have any challenge, let us know so that we can help you out. Okay, so thank you for your time. Also, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, um, invite your friends, help us to share the, this information with your friends too. Okay, another advice I'll give to you is that please continue to study your book check your test books and then solve more problems okay solve more problems we help you a lot so thank you so much we hope to see you in our next class